And welcome back, guys. So, right now, I am heading towards the true ending. I know I haven't recorded in a while. I've been kind of busy with a different game, Persona 5, but I have since finished it. And now, I am going to finish this. I know I told you that the other one was the finale. Sorry, tricked you again. There is a true ending that is different to this game. Now, I'm going to be playing through this section rather quick, so I'll probably just edit past it, because you guys have seen this before. So, I'm going to be openly admitting to using a walkthrough just so that I can get through this part and the comms room quickly. Um, so, maybe I'll do a fast foot motion or something, but anyway, uh, be right back, guys. Hello? Hey, Kim? Yeah, would you please uh, text me your numbers? Yeah, I will. Yeah, please do that at the end of every field day, alright? I will. I just have it on No, I understand. I get it. I just wanted to be sure you knew to text me after, after every field day, okay? Don't wait till the email, because I have to report that to Miss Wanda as quick as possible, alright? Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Kim. Okay, great. Thanks, Kim. Bye. While this is going, guys, I wanted to give you a quick little heads up. So what happened was I had completed all the paths. I thought I had done everything that needed to be done in order to get to the true ending, but for some reason it was just not letting me get there. Because in the original game, all you had to do was do all the what they called story checks. Now, if you guys remember, there were a couple conversations that were had revolving things like Ice-9, and then there was a conversation where Santa had to give me the, the four-leaf clover, and then there was a conversation where I had to give that four-leaf clover to Clover, and then there was also one other situation when we were in the operating room where Seven was trying to remember something and he said, do you know about Ice-9? Or something like that. So you have to have all of those things checked in order to be able to get to the final ending, the true ending, as well as you have to have cleared the safe ending. Now, you know, I'm explaining this just because it's kind of weird why I'm playing this over again otherwise. It's a little bit of a spoiler, but, you know, hopefully you guys were able to figure it out that as you're going through the different uh, paths, you have to know certain information. And you already saw it with the safe and the coffin. Now, if I had not cleared the safe ending, the previous one that you guys saw would have ended, it would have just stopped at the coffin. It just stops. It's weird. It just, the game just does not continue. So, now that I have cleared all those story checks, and in order to do so, I had to go back to the beginning, play through this whole path through all those four story checks, and as I'm getting through this room here, we will finally be able to move on to some further areas of the ship, and then finally towards this game's true conclusion. Now guys, again, you know how much I love this. You are in for a treat. Sit back and enjoy, okay? I'll be right back. Z-E-R-O, huh? Well, even if he wasn't one of us, there's no way that man could be Zero. Huh? Don't you get it? The letters that spell Zero on the TV screen, the captain's clothes he's got on, and of course, the bracelet with a Zero on it. It's too obvious! <laughs> look, look, this is Zero right here! This dead body is Zero! <laughs> Isn't that kind of fishy? You're right. Only an idiot yeah, wouldn't see through zero. something like that. No, that, that's not the point. So I'm not trying to make fun of them for thinking a trick like this would work. I'm sure they didn't think it would work. Which makes me wonder... I think this is a challenge. A challenge from the person who's really behind all of this. He's making fun of us. Huh? Don't you get it? If whoever killed this guy really wanted us to think this corpse was Zero, they'd never have put a bracelet on him. Walking around with a Zero bracelet would be like hanging a sign around your neck that said, I did it! <laughs> Anyone with a brain would be able to see that this guy is supposed to look like everything Zero is supposed to be. 
just like we did. Uh. The killer must have known we wouldn't think he was Zero and put the bracelet on him anyway. Do you know why? Why? Like I said, he's mocking us. Too bad, suckers, this isn't Zero. Where's the real me then? See if you can catch me. <laughs> this voice actor's having a little bit too much fun right now. It's the same bad joke a lot of criminals like to play. They'll just sit back and watch people run in circles. That's really twisted. But it almost seems kind of childish. Yeah, you're right. It's really childish. It's like it's just a game to whoever this person is. That's what seems funny to me. All right, let's get back to the point. Who killed this man? I don't know. And what's this guy's deal? Who is he? How would I know that? If I knew anything, I would have told you. You have no idea who he is. Why would I? Hmm. We should check and see if he's got anything on him that might tell us who he is. Give me a hand here, Clover. Yeah, why didn't we think to search him before? Huh? <laughs> Seriously. We gotta flip him over. How else are we gonna search his pockets? <laughs> okay, uh, fine. Guess I'll do it. Here we go. <clears throat> Huh? Although I honestly think in the other timeline, she did it. Don't know if she did it in this one. Hey, it's the... Well, of course it comes off. His heartbeat reached zero. Lastly, we have discussed how to remove the bracelets. There are only two ways to do so. One. You escape from this ship. Two, your heart rate reaches zero. In other words, once the bracelet is taken outside the confine of the ship, or the backside of the Mary's heartbeat has fallen to zero, it will shut down automatically. Oh god. This man. He's dead, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just. I. I guess I didn't really think about it until right now. How could you not? <laughs> if his bracelet's off, that means he's dead. Well, it's pretty obvious that he's dead. Seriously? You don't really need to look at his bracelet to figure out that he's dead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess you're right. It is pretty obvious. Well, uh, he looks a lot better than the other bodies we've seen, though. <laughs> you know? I mean, if, if there wasn't all this blood, he'd almost look like he was still alive. <laughs> I mean, I know it's kind of a messed up thing to say, but he kind of has it better, you know? Dying from a bomb going off inside of you? I mean, that's just... <sighs> I mean, it would be pretty instant. <laughs> I almost think I'd rather prefer that. Some of Snake's bones went right through his skin. I, I think the explosion must have thrown him against a wall or something. There was a broken bone just sticking out of his left arm. And... Uh, oh. What did you just say? Oh man, uh, I am... I, I am so sorry. I, I shouldn't have said that. I, I really don't know what I was thinking. I mean... No, that's not what I'm talking about. What did you say about his arm? A uh, arm? Yes, his left arm. You said it, didn't you? Well, yeah, I did, but... I mean, I, didn't, didn't you see it too? Of course not. I could barely look at him. There's no way I was going to see the details. Are you sure it was his left arm? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was. And he had a broken bone, right? What the hell are you getting at here? Just shut up and answer me! Yeah, he did. Uh, it was pretty bad, too. The bone was sticking out of the arm. <laughs> See, this is actually supposed to go first. <laughs> this conversation happened already, guys. You didn't get to see it. Um, because I missed it when I was doing editing. 
Uh, you just you probably noticed when you were watching that video before where it's like, uh, when did we hear that he had a fake left arm? <laughs> so apologies, guys. Here's that conversation. Clover? <laughs> What's wrong? <laughs> Look, I'm sorry if I said anything. Thank you. Huh? He's alive, because that's not him. Uh, what are you... Thank you so much, Junpei! Hey, uh, what's going on with you? I'm sorry, it's just... I'm so happy! So this saves Clover from completely breaking mentally. Why? The body in the shower room! It, it isn't his! It isn't my brother! Huh? It's not Snake! Why on earth would you think that? Because his left arm is... Fake. I'm sorry. I really shouldn't be talking about this. Uh... But... He's still alive. I'm... I'm so happy! I'm so glad! Uh-huh. Junpei, you were right! Huh? No matter what happens, you can never lose hope. Remember the four-leaf clover? You have to remember what's most important, and that's to have faith and to have love. If you can remember all of those, that'll bring you good luck. Uh, that's... I only made it here because you gave me this. I was suspicious of everybody, and I was angry and miserable. Yes, you were. But because I had this four-leaf clover, because of what you said to me, I... Yeah. Thank you so much, Junpei. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you guys understand what I'm saying, but in case you don't, you have to have had all four of those story checks in this route through the game in order to get to this point. You have to say, you have to talk about Ice Nine, and I think you have to say, yeah, that is odd. You have to take the, the book, well, sorry, back up. You have to take the bookmark from Santa, and then the second one is you have to have the conversation about Ice Nine in the freezer. Third one is you have to give this to um, yeah, sorry. You have to give this to Clover, duh, and then the- or sorry, back up. You have to have the conversation with Seven about Ice Nine, and you have to give this bookmark to Clover. If all four of those story checks are passed, and if you continue to this point, you are able to get past the ending where she goes freaking postal and kills everybody. That's the key. Anyway, don't ask me how I figured it out. I just kept playing the game the first time until I got it, so. Oh, uh, if you really want to thank somebody, you, you should be thanking Santa. Santa? Why? Well, he was the one who gave me that thing. And the words for each leaf, I got that from him too. Oh. Um. Awkward hug moment. Uh huh. Uh huh. Is she pacing? Is that what this means? Did Did Santa really tell you those things? Yes. Why do you ask? Yeah, he, he did. Did I uh, say something wrong? Oh no, not at all. In fact, this could be really good news, I think. What? You think? Santa knew about the words and the clover. The only people who should know about that are the other subjects. What do you mean, other subjects? Subjects? 
the other people who were in the experiment nine years ago, with my brother and me. Wait. Uh -huh. But he's blind. And I was part of the Nevada test group. Wait, what? So neither of us would be able to recognize the faces of the people who were on this boat. Whoa, 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 okay, time out. Let's just calm down for a second, okay? Start from the top. Because if you're saying what I think you're saying... I think I may know who Zero is. Don't start with the end and then jump to the middle. Why? That's the way this game has been. <laughs> you, you, you gotta start with one and then move to two and three and four and so on. If you don't tell me stuff in the right order, I'm never gonna be able to figure it out. Okay. Oh man. Are we finally gonna hear what happened then? Alright. Let's start with this experiment. Yes, please. What happened on this boat nine years ago? Do you know about morphogenetic fields? Yes. Morphogenetic fields. Alright, All right. how about this? Theory, Theory of the, of the telepathic, telepathic mechanism. mechanism. I think Lotus mentioned something like that. Yes, she did. Hmm, telepathy, huh? Well, that's not really it, but I suppose it's similar. So they were testing telepathy on this ship? Yeah, I guess so. So, what exactly did they have you guys do? The same thing that we're doing now. Exactly the same thing. What? The Nonary Game. Nine people were put on this boat, and nine others were put in the building in Nevada, and the game started. Look, I'm sorry, but I, I don't get it. What do the Nonary Game and some telepathy experiment have to do with each other? Am I missing something here? I think we all are. The ability to access a morphogenetic field is affected by a couple of things. The first is epiphany, and the other is danger. You know how sometimes when you're up against a really tough problem, and then the answer just kind of pops in your head? That's an epiphany. And what you learn from the epiphany can be transmitted with telepathy. When you add danger to that equation, then it gets easier to transmit that information over telepathy. So you're saying the Nonary game was supposed to introduce that element of danger? Yeah, I'm starting to get that. That kind of makes sense. I mean, I don't... Logically, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but it certainly makes a lot of sense in this world. Yeah, but it couldn't be just any old danger. It had to be life and death. It had to be life and death. See, now I'm getting it. This does, in this world, this does make logical sense. And in general, you know, when we are in life and death situations, it is a pretty amazing what the human body can do. I mean, I'm sure you guys have all heard stories about how, like, people are able to lift cars when uh, their loved ones are stuck under the wheel or something. You know what I mean? I'm sure you've all heard that before. People, like, destroy themselves in doing so. But their adrenaline allows them to actually be able to do superhuman feats because they know that that death is on the line. It's pretty amazing what people will do when they're, they or the people they love are threatened with death. It's s seemingly superhuman what people can do when they're threatened with death of themselves or the death of a loved one. God, I love this stuff. This is so interesting. And... And someone did actually die. A girl. Huh. 
She was on the boat with my brother. I was in Nevada. I never met her, but I did hear her name. Uh. Her name was... Oh, are you kidding? Tell me her name! Oh, my apologies. I oh. seem to have disturbed you. Ace. You two must have strong stomachs. I can't imagine how you could stay in this room for so long. At any rate, Junpei, would you be so kind as to come and help me with something? Like what? I'm having a little trouble, and I could really use your assistance. I wouldn't trust him. Uh... Come on, it'll only take a moment. I wouldn't trust him. I don't want Ace to hear us. We can talk about this later. Huh? Hey, wait! Junpei? What are you doing in there? Hurry up! Ugh! <sighs> <sighs> uh. Well, back to the puzzle solving, guys. I'll be right back. Yeah. W well, I mean, it is just a theory. Hmm. Junpei, have you ever heard of the term Cass? <laughs> I have, actually. <laughs> Sorry. There's a database that I use at uh, where I work, and it's called Cass. Anyway. No, I don't know what you're talking about, Ace. Cass? It stands for Cells Alive System. It is an advanced technology for freezing and preserving organic matter. Ah, uh, is it? Put simply, it is a technique that allows one to freeze things without the formation of ice crystals. Yeah, is that how they're uh, in this future time, or present time, I don't know. Answering the question for how they can freeze people's bodies or minds or whatever. Normally, if you freeze something fresh, water within its cells expands as it crystallizes, damaging the cell membrane. CAS, however, works differently. The object to be frozen is super cooled using magnetic fields and then frozen instantly and uniformly, giving ice crystals no time to form. It was originally developed for the preservation of food as an alternative to the normal freezing process. Now, however, there are rumors that it can be used for other things. How could you use magnetic fields to supercool something? Hmm. I mean, I understand the laws of conduction, but I don't know how conduction has anything to do with magnets. Fucking magnets, how do they work? What do you mean, other things? Well, there are obvious medical uses, but perhaps also space travel. Space travel? Are you serious? Surely you've heard of suspended animation. Cryogenic freezing? It's a fairly common idea in science fiction books and films. People are sometimes frozen for especially lengthy journeys through space. Whoa, 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 wait a minute there. Are you saying that Alice was frozen using that cast thing? Well, I'm sure the possibility is quite low, but it is a possibility. If this special ice you call Ice-9 does indeed exist, and casts were used to freeze her into that sort of ice instantaneously... You think she could be alive? It would make sense. Well, I can't say for sure, of course. I'm only talking about possibilities. The melting point for Ice-9 is 96 degrees, right? If she were put somewhere where she could reach that temperature... <laughs> That's nuts! Are you really saying she could have defrosted and started walking about? You're quite right. It does sound unbelievable. But if she had, then we would have an explanation for the man we found dead on the floor. Wait, are you saying she killed him? 
Uh, don't think so. You mean the guy dressed like a captain? Yes. He was dead when we found him. Clearly, he was murdered. But then again, in this timeline, we don't know who did that. We really don't. But if he was murdered, then by whom? It couldn't have been one of us. That would be impossible. That's actually a good point. I don't know how it would be possible if one of us did it. In order to enter the captain's quarters, one must first open door one. That door that requires the earth key prevented us from accessing door one. See, I kind of figured it was Zero who killed him. Who was it that opened that door? Santa and Lotus. Right. Clearly, the two of them could not have opened door one, or any other door for that matter. Who else then could have done so? It's so late, I can't even think to do the number combinations. I'm not sure. Nobody. After Santa and Lotus used the Earth Key, they turned back and met up with me in June. Then, we returned to the large hospital room and found Ace, Seven, and Clover. While we'd gone into the shower room, Ace, Seven, and Clover had stayed behind. But it's impossible for those three to open door one. Unless they had help. Hmm, but what about when June and I took the elevator to door two? Ace, Seven, and Clover. That's one makes eight makes twelve. So three. Three plus seven. No. No. No, that. I don't. I'm confusing myself. Anyway. No. Still won't work. We roll. It would be impossible for any of us to be the murderer. That being the case, who could have killed him? Wouldn't it make sense if his killer was someone who had been in the ship for some time? Yeah, I thought Zero. <sighs> A person like that would know the ship well. They would know the locations of all the hidden passages and secret doors. The numbered door would mean nothing to someone like that. Especially if they had the Zero bracelet, or the Nine bracelet. <clears throat> It would be a simple thing for them to enter the captain's quarters. Then you're saying the killer was Alice? Well, this is all only one possible theory. All ice, Alice. Is she really somewhere on the ship? Maybe this card will give me access to the Forest of Knowledge. And the big mystery. What could be there beyond the forest of knowledge? Anyway, whatever. It's gonna have to wait. I can't do anything right now. I'll come back to this later. You certainly will. So what's interesting, guys, is that as you've noticed, I've been clicking here to try and move it to skip. Now the original Nintendo DS game would simply allow you to hold the right trigger and it would automatically skip very rapidly through conversations that you've already seen on that on that game file. And that's kind of what it's doing. Because remember in the original game you had to literally play it at least I think at a minimum you have to play it like six times in order to get everything at a minimum so there's a lot of dialogue <laughs> and that function allowed you to skip a lot of that dialogue now this version has the flowchart which is in the second and third game but not the first originally I do like that they included the flowchart in this one anyway we are ready to go this is based, as we've seen, on the word zero.
And there it is. A note. Now it's a note, huh? A note? Yeah. I found it in the pocket of the guy with the captain's clothes. It said something about the darkness of the sinister hand or something. Ah, so that's where she found that. What the hell? Uh, let me see it. Uh, no, not right. Hey, Junpei, Clover, what are you two doing? Hurry up. He's getting mad. I'll show it to you later, all right? Come on, we gotta hurry. Uh, from the look of that pocket, it doesn't particularly look like just a note. Jeez, what are you thinking? Uh, for crying out loud. The big stairs. Huh. So this is where it ends up. Jumpy! Clover! What's up? We found it! Found what? We found it! What did you find? The last door! We found door nine! Wait, what? Come on! Just follow us! We'll explain on the way! Okay. Well, if that's the case... Wait for me. We should get going as well. Jumpy! We finally made it! Have we? I've seen you die too many times. Yeah, it's finally time. Don't you tease me. We've reached the end. Something's bothering me. Only three to five people can go through the numbered door. Yeah, just because you haven't seen. There's two. Seven of us are on our way to door nine. That means that, best case scenario, there will be two of us who have to stay behind. Two people. Is there a way? 4.30. We've only got 90 minutes left. I've got no time to wonder about it now. Hey! Junpei! June! What the hell are you two doing? Hurry it up! Okay, okay, jeez. Let's go, Jumpy! Yeah. I know I told you I'd explain it earlier, but honestly, there ain't much to explain. After we sp After that, we headed down another hallway. It took us toward the bow and eventually to the number six that you two found earlier. We opened it and kept going. There was another locked door behind it, like usual, but this time we had to complete two different areas before we could unlock it. Once we were through that door, there was another hallway that went the other direction, toward the stern. So, on your way, you found the elevator. That's right. So, in other words, you kinda did a lap, huh? You came from that side to this side. Yeah. So, where's the number nine door? Over here. Follow me. Uh. By the way... You know, it's because of Santa that we're all here right now. Huh? That all seven of us are going to door nine. Why is that? What? You don't get it? Santa, seven, and Lotus. Three plus seven is ten. Oh, yeah. Three plus seven is ten, plus eight is eighteen, one plus eight is nine. What's their digital root? Nine. It's nine. That's right. They could have just left me behind and kept going if they'd wanted to. But they didn't. Yes, because Santa wouldn't let them. He said we can't leave June and the others behind. Interesting. Because if I recall correctly, he seemed perfectly willing to leave people behind in the past. Maybe I'm wrong. 
That's why we went looking for you guys. And then you got on the elevator and went back to the central staircase. That's right. Hmm. Well, uh, I wouldn't have called that one. Uh, that Santa would be the one to stick up for you. I mean. Oh, don't get me wrong. I don't mean that Seven and Lotus said they wanted to leave me behind. We were just talking about it, and Santa objected to it first. Is that so? We're here. So, is this... Yep, it is. We've been through this a couple times. Can't wait to see what this time brings. Let's do this. Yeah. There's no other place for us to go. Nope. Just look around. There's a big old iron wall at the end of the hallway. The other hallways on the left and right are blocked by metal grates. I see. All right, let's get moving. <sighs> oh. Yep, and we've been here before. The nine door. Not the... Uh... We're finally here! No doubt about it! This is door nine! Notice this time it's not engaged. <laughs> oh, finally! This is the last... Junpei, look behind you. Behind? What? Why? A door... and a nine. There's another one? Hey, what the hell? What the hell is going on here? There's a red there too! That means... And of course it won't open. But why? Why the hell are there two doors? Do you think perhaps one is the right door and the other is the wrong one? I don't know about that. It seems unlikely. What makes you say so? Well, at least we're all here this time. That's gotta be progress, right? Well, think about all the rooms we've been through so far. They're full of puzzles, but there are always hints about how to solve them. I'm pretty sure there aren't any rooms where we just had to go with our best guess and leave it to instinct to solve the puzzle. Do you really think that at the very end of the game, Zero's going to suddenly throw in something that depends entirely on luck? Then you're saying there's some sort of hint in this room? No, I don't think there's a hint anywhere in here. Oh, there's a big one. I searched it very well when I was in here before. I didn't find anything that might have been a hint, though. Well then. Yeah. Both of these are the right door. I mean, if you think about it. Zero never actually said there was only one door with a nine on it. It is hidden, but an exit can be found. Seek a way out. Seek a door that carries a nine. So if there are two number nine doors, if we split it up right, that's not gonna work. You've got a notebook and a pen, right? Can I borrow them? Yeah, here. Look at this. You get it? The numbers on the... There's only eight possibilities if we split up into two groups of three or four people. So if three people go through the door, then four are left behind. If four go through, then three are left behind, right? Yeah. No way. <sighs> hmm. <sighs> well, shit, now that we have everybody here, this is a lot more complicated. Come to think of it. What is this room? It 
looks like it's set up for some kind of ceremony. Well, it's a chapel. But what kind? Is that an altar? A coffin? No, it, it couldn't possibly be. Okay, I give up. I give up. I figured if we sat around here long enough, someone would volunteer. But... I guess nobody's got the guts to do it. What are you talking about? What? You guys didn't figure it out yet? <sighs> fine, fine. Let me enlighten you. Clover was mostly right with her little explanation earlier, but she missed something. She wasn't really wrong, she just... Ah, screw it! Let me just write it out. If you're trying to leave with a group of three and a group of four and get everybody out, Clover's right. But there's another way. Only one combination, though. If you split us up into groups of three, three, and one, you can make this combination. Wait, this means... Don't get me wrong here, I'm not trying to copy Ace or anything like that. Even if he hadn't been the hero back in the big hospital room, I'd still be saying the same thing. The same thing? Are you saying... Yeah, I am. I'll stay behind. Uh... Uh, uh. Why are you acting so heroic all of a sudden? Are you some kind of idiot? No, I am completely against this. I'll be goddamned if I'm gonna have to owe you for getting out of here. I'm against it too. I didn't want to leave Ace behind, and I don't want to leave you either. I don't like that idea. There's gotta be other options. I disagree as well. I can't say I care much for you being the hero. Well, there you go, Seven. Proposal denied. Clover's right. There's got to be a better way than this. Hmm. Doesn't make any sense. Whoa, hold on a minute. I haven't said anything yet. What were you going to say? Are you... agreeing? You want to leave him here? Nah, I'm against it. I don't want to leave Seven here alone. Then I don't see how it matters. I said alone. Huh? Wait. I said I don't want to leave Seven alone. What are you saying? What the hell are you... What? You don't get it? No, I don't. I can't leave just one person. I need two more. Three people, including Seven. I'll be leaving behind three people. You will be leaving behind three people? Excuse me? That's my proposal. No. Those are my orders. Orders? What do you mean, orders? What the hell makes you think you can order us around? Who the hell's gonna listen to you? You all will. In three seconds, you won't have a choice. Oh my god. What? Three, two, one. No! See? I told you. 